Once a year, round about Easter, many of us go to the Sydney show. There's all the fun of the fair. Lots of things to see and do. But there's one thing always worth seeing. The champion beef cattle being judged. This is a champion Aberdeen Angus, a splendid example of fine breeding. These aristocrats come from Australia's principal stud properties. These are Hereford bulls. And here's our champion Shorthorn. These champions are bred expressly to improve the quality of beef production in Australia. The story of our cattle industry begins with Governor Phillip and the first settlers of New South Wales. Cattle had to be brought out from England by sailing ship for breeding purposes and to supply fresh meat for a half-starved population. The settlers had trouble too. Cattle often escaped into the bush. Many of them became sick and died because they were not used to Australian conditions. In the year 1800, there were only a thousand head of cattle in the whole of Australia. In 1813, when the Blue Mountains were crossed, wonderful grazing country was discovered. Gradually, pioneer cattlemen drove their herds from New South Wales right up to Queensland, the Northern Territory, and Western Australia. Cattle are also raised in other states but mainly to supply the local markets. Many cattle stations cover vast areas. In the Northern Territory, some stations are as big as 10,000 square miles. Water is the problem on these great stations. Rivers are very few and far between, so bores have to be sunk into the sun-baked ground to tap the water beneath and pump it up for the cattle and horses to drink. Most of the work on northern cattle stations is done during the cool, dry winter months. First of all, the stock horses are rounded up. A stockman uses anything up to five horses during a big cattle muster. He has to have these extra mounts because rounding up half wild cattle soon tires a horse. And a tired horse can't be ridden every day on this job. The man who looks after the horses is called a horse tailor. A young horse new to this work has to be broken in and trained. He's up, but it's going to be tough. He's off. What a come down. Steady. Steady. Cattle mastering can be a tricky, dangerous business for both horse and rider. And it's very necessary that both are thoroughly well trained before the real work begins. When the mustering season starts, the stockmen go out to prepare the first camp. The camp is often more than 20 miles away from the homestead. A good cook is an important member of the team. The vigorous open air work gives the stockmen big appetites. So the cook is kept very busy indeed. The food and stores were once carried out to the mustering camp by pack horses, but today, wherever possible, trucks are used. During a cattle muster, stockmen always work to a plan, each man mustering a different part of the paddock to make sure that all the cattle in the area are rounded up. The herds grow as the stockmen work their way through the huge paddock, bringing their mobs together as they near the mustering yards. Finally, all the cattle from the riverbed, scrub and plains are brought together in one big mob and are driven to the yards. Here in the mustering yard, the calves are separated from the cows and bulls.
The calves are driven into special yards so they can be branded and given an earmark. For branding, the calf is held in a cradle, the main purpose of the cradle being to hold the calf steady. A frightened bawling calf is strong, especially when it struggles, and the cradle makes the job easier for everybody, including the calf. Cattle are branded and earmarked so that you can tell who they belong to. The next step is inoculation and dipping. The stockmen drive the cattle into a narrow laneway called a crush, where they are held and inoculated against pleuro-pneumonia. And that's a sad tale, isn't it? Next in the health treatment is the dipping process. The cattle plunge into the anti-vermin fluid, which kills off the ticks. Come on in, Daisy. The water's fine. When the cattle have been dipped, they are ready to leave the yards. The bulls and cows go back to the breeding paddock, and the young calves are put out to graze and grow up. The mature beef cattle begin their long journey to the market, and this is where the drover takes charge. The cattle may have to travel up to 1,500 miles to the nearest railhead, and they will average about 10 miles a day. The drovers will be on the road for nearly six months. The main stock routes extend across the Northern Territory to the railhead at Dejara, from northwestern Queensland to the railhead at Winton, from western Queensland to Yaraka, from southwestern Queensland to Burke, and from Birdsville to the railhead at Marie. Exciting names, exciting places at the back of beyond. At the end of the long journey to the railhead, the cattle are loaded into cattle trucks. This is a difficult job which requires experienced and careful handling, because cattle are easily frightened and are likely to hurt themselves. That's why they are kept in single file as they enter the trucks. Come on, all aboard. Hurry on there. Take her away, driver. And so the cattle begin their long journey to the big city markets. In Wyndham, Western Australia, there is a new development in meat transport. Cattle are killed in a local abattoir or slaughterhouse and are loaded onto a plane for city and overseas markets. It's a quick, efficient method of meat transport and saves cattle moving across rough country. What a change in the cattle industry since Governor Phillips' day. Modern methods and better breeding have helped to make Australia's meat famous throughout the world. And for that, we can thank the cattlemen and the pioneer spirit that still lives today. Mm -hmm.